Hello, I'm Mix Mars and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to look at an Atco Bauer Mold 20S um, with um, a Tecumseh engine on top. I purchased off of a fellow who I purchased miles off um, previously, and he said he cleaned the carburetor out, put fuel down the head, and uh, got the machine to fire, but he cannot get it to start and run, and he parted it out as a um, spares or repair machine. So I picked it up for really, really good money for what they're worth. And hopefully you can get this machine up, running, and then fully serviced, and then sell it on. We can make a pretty, pretty penny indeed. This is the Atco Bauer Model 20S with a Tecumseh engine on the top, not the Kawasaki. So it is the slightly older version, but even so, they do um, perform very, very well. And they do cut the lawns and stripe absolutely fantastically. So yeah, by the end of this video, hopefully we have a lawnmower up and running on the lawn and cutting as it should do. And then we will all be quizzing and as happy as Larry. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mows and Mower Man, hit the subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty. And let's try and get this Atco Bow Mold to at least do something. And it'll be nice to see it run and fire up. So back out into the abyss we go. And uh, I've just done a video on this um, little tiny um, uh, Atco uh, midget engine. Um, so if you're watching this video now, um, you just missed a video of the uh, little tiny Atco midget uh, with the Villiers Mark III two stroker, which is an absolutely beautiful machine. Uh, for what it is, um, but there is a video on it, um, which I have just literally released. Do you want me just to fire it up for you guys? It should still be warm actually. So I have just done a video on it. Let me turn the old fuel on. It shouldn't need no choke, I want to fall. Get my kickstart flipper ready. Oh, it's absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely with a kit that is. Let's just turn that old girl off. I'll turn the fuel tap off as well. So there's a video on that. If you want to see me um, getting that thing up and running, then uh, feel free to, uh, to check out my video. Let me turn the fuel tap off. But that's not today's video. Today's video is going to be on this here 20 inch Atco uh, bow moral, um, which I picked up as I said in the first part of the video for cheap, 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 cheap. Um, so I have put some petrol in, um, in the tank. I don't know if it held fuel overnight, I don't know if it's got a fuel leak or not. Uh, no, it hasn't. So it has got a bit of a fuel leak, which I'm guessing is coming out of the bottom of the, um, of the carburetor on this Tillerstone. Um, now, I have had a couple of people message me of late to say, uh, where did you get the fuel caps for those? Um, because the fuel caps are leaking. So what I do on most of mine now is as a standard, I just replace them with the Briggs & Stratton classic uh, fuel caps because they fit so much better than these ones. And that's not original, I know that, but they just do fit so much better. So if you've got a Atco Bauer Moral and your fuel cap is no good, swap it out for a uh, Briggs & Stratton uh, Classic um, fuel cap. And they just fit so much better and they don't leak as well. So I'll put a bit of petrol down here. Now it is going to leak because it, I did put petrol on it last night um, and tried to pull it thinking I'd, I'd be on a winner straight away, but I wasn't. So just enough just to wet its whistle. That's all I want, just to prove the case. It doesn't start. It'll probably start now. Um, turn it on, onto choke. Plenty of throttle and pull it up. So it's doing nothing. Just double checking the throttle mechanism is all working, which it is. So let me grab a um, a spark plug wrench and what I want to do is just literally um, 
pop a little bit of carburetor spray just down the head because a fella said he did that and it just ma it made a noise. Just goes to prove that you haven't got a duff engine because there's no point just to put it on the bench to clean the carburetor up if you um I've got a duffing. So it's got a brand new spark plug in there. I think it looks brand new. Yeah, it is, it's absolutely brand new. Brand new spark plug, just want to check the condition of the HT lead inside, yeah, that's okay. So a little bit of spray. Just down the head, piston's right on the top. Let's just do that up. And all I want to do is just make, just, just want to hear it make a noise. That's all I want to do. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. Just want to hear it go bang. And that's what it's doing. That's it, no more. So I'm suspecting fuel delivery issue. And what we're going to do, put up on the bench, and we'll have a look, see what's going on with this machine, and hopefully we'll get this, this 20 inch up and running. For what I paid for it, it was cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, but if I can get it to run nicely, yeah, we're quids in, baby. We're quids in. Quick look around the machine. Uh, we'll show you the cylinder has not that long uh, been sharpened. Nice cylinder on there. Uh, that's all in good nick. The rollers are good nick. The comb's in good nick. There's a little bit of surface rust here, there. Just looks like you know, battle scars. Uh, this will be painted up anyway. Um, but, but it's all there. It's all where it needs to be. So let's get up on the bench. Quick little look at it. See what we can't do. I'm guessing carburetor. Okay, so um, turn the choke off, Mick. I'm going to get a little set of fuel clamps because we have got a bit of a fuel leak on here. Uh, so I'm going to clamp that off. Uh, we'll take the air box off. No air filter in here. There's no drama, I've got spares of those. And I'm going to find the right uh, Allen key for that. I think it's that one. The top of my head. That's a bit loose. That's a bit loosey goosey. Uh, that's the one there. That's the one. So we're going to remove the uh, the carburetor first off, off off the old machine. So undo these two. Now I have actually got an in-depth video on how to clean um, these Tillerson carburetors, which I'll link up above the screen on the top right-hand side right now. There's a, an in-depth video on how to clean these carburetors, and it's just purely just the carburetor clean video only. So if you don't want to watch me do this um, video in its entirety, you can just now slope off, go and click that link, and that will take you to a video I've done previously on how to clean these Tillerson uh, TK carburetors. And hopefully that'll get you running a bit quicker than uh, sitting watching me do uh, this entire video. So let's take these bolts out. Out you come, Mr. Bolty. Take the air box off. Put that to one side. And we've got a fuel lead to remove. Gasket is in place, that's good. There goes the governor. So yeah, I'm actually losing fuel straight out of this carb. All right, let's, uh, let's stop this old fuel leak going off. Let's make the area a bit safer what it is. That's it. You get a pair of forceps on there. I can he find me um my small set of fuel clamps they're around somewhere let's clamp off of that see how that does that should stop that he says no it's still going to go it still wants to leak on me there's not a lot of fuel in there but uh we put a bolt in there as well that'll stop it all right good 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 so that's the, the fuel now system now saved um which brings us on to this little tiny um, carburetor here. Now, the biggest reason why this um, carburetor has such issues is purely because um, this little kitty up here, which he says he tried to clean the carburetor, and I'm looking at this, and it, I would say that, that actually has not been removed, okay, which is a little tiny bolt or a little tiny jet on the top. And the reason it's not been removed is because so many people struggle with it. So let me get this lawnmower off the bench here, make a bit of room, and we'll clean the carburetor out on the bench just in front of you. Okay, so we've got the uh, lawnmower off the old bench, and I'm gonna go for a bit of a clean on this carbine. Now, this is the Tilliston. Now, in all fairness, okay, I will say, the Tilliston carby on these machines are uh, so much better than their brothers, which were the uh, Delorto 
or the, the auto carburetor, okay? Um, the, the, they're just so much better. Uh, so if you can find the Tillerson carburetor for these, then I would highly recommend you, um, you pick one up. Um, the problem is you can't just do a straightforward transfer. You have to change the inlet manifold as well. So if you do pick one up, just make sure you actually get the inlet manifold as well. Okay, just to change that as well, which is no biggie. Ah, so there's actually no O-ring in here either. So he has definitely been in. We're missing an O-ring. Okay, which is not a good thing because I don't know if I've got any spares of those, but we shall see. So I'm gonna remove the little tiny um, screw out the back of this bowl as well, because uh, that's got to come out to make sure that that's, that's all clear. So he has definitely been in, which he said he did, but it's never gonna run right anyway with um, a, an O-ring missing. That's for certainty sure. I've got to try and remove this little tiny pin here. Now these are renowned for being a little bit of a pickle. And sometimes you have to put them in a vise. And in my detailed video, uh, it shows that they are a bit of a, a bit of a pickle when it comes to, to knocking them out. But it, it, it may just drift out. We should see how lucky we get. I doubt it will, because I don't. So that tells me if, if he said he'd clean the carburetor, he hasn't actually had uh, this float out either, because that, that's not moving. So I'm gonna try and just get my little tiny tinking hammer, um, just to start with, see if I can't do it um, on the bench in front of you guys. Um, but if I can't, then I'll have to be um, put into the vise, which is, what, which is what happens so many times. Now you have to be careful here, because if you hit it too hard, then you will actually break the posts on the carburetor. Now I will say these carburetors are roughly about 170 pound brand new now, if you can find one. Okay, so all I'm going to do is a little tiny, tiny, tiny post here which holds a float on. All I'm going to do is just put this onto the edge and just try and drift that little tiny pin out without damaging the post. Now you have to go backwards and forwards with it, okay guys? It's not an easy thing to do. It's not something I like to do either. But there is no other way. And you certainly don't want to be damaging this post because these, these posts will just snap on you. And if, if that snaps, game over. Game over. All right, I'm gonna put it in the vise, not gonna muck about with it. So let me get it squeezed in the vise, and then I get, uh, make it a bit more solid for me. But all you're trying to do is just punch these little tiny pin, this little tiny pin out, but you just have to go so careful. A smaller hammer than that, preferably, and um, just these little tiny screwdrivers I use just to punch it out, and uh, you'll be golden. Give us two ticks, I'll be back. Okay, I was lucky. Uh, it didn't take a lot of tapping at all, and it, and it came straight out, so I was lucky. Uh, but that hasn't been out in a while. Um, I can tell that just by the condition of the, of the actual needle itself. So that's that. Uh, you've got, in here, you've got a little tiny main jet as well, which has got to come out. Um, you've got, that can't be left in there. And again, um, looking at the state of the, the actual jet itself, I think the gentleman literally, when he, when he cleaned the carb, all he done was took, it, took the bowl off and give it a spray. That's what it looks like he's done, because that, that jet doesn't look like it's been out to me. So I'm just going to try and remove that jet now, just come out with relative ease. There's a the main jet, quick inspection of a main jet. And it is so restricted, it's not even funny. It is so, there is a little tiny, tiny, tiny ray of light in there, but it's not a lot. Let me try and get a decent light on it for you. You guys can see that, I don't know. I'll try my hardest. Can you see that light? I don't know, um, but it, it isn't brilliant. So that will have to be rimmed out, okay? With a set of um, files. And then inside here, you have a, an emulsion tube and a main jet as well, okay? Now we need to buy what? Buy one of these, a six in one, all in, a six all in one tool. And the eight mil bit there sits on that little tiny nut on the top. You can't get off any other way, people. Okay, that's what's the right tool for it, but the six in one tool, that will, oh, as long as you're careful with it, rock it first, because this has not been out. That's going. You don't want to snap back, it's only brass. Once that comes out, that's not been out. And you can tell that by the, by the condition and color of it. Okay, that's never been out. Once that's out, inside here is a little tiny uh, emulsion tube as well. 
and that'll be pressed in there. That, that, that ain't gonna wanna come out, but I've got a little trick for that as well. Right, so I've got my special tool. So I'm gonna put a little bit of WD-40 straight down the head of that, okay? And I'm gonna go back the other way of it, just to loosen up a bit of, bit of dirt that's in there, okay? Now what I've got here is a homemade crochet tool. You know the crochet tools your wife uses, or your, or your granny? I've got a really, really thin one. I don't know how thin this one is, but I've actually hit mine with a grinder to make it even smaller. It then goes up into a hole, and then you just pull it out just like that. See how easy that was? Get yourself Granny's Crochet Tool, boys, and just ground it off so it's really, really thin, and then just taper it so it goes up into the, up into the, up into the molten tube, it grabs it, and then takes it straight out. See how easy that was? And as you can see, there's no way that's been out either. Okay, no way. So we're now at a point where we, we sort of have diagnosed, we know the reason why this machine is not running. It's not running because it has a missing O-ring. It's running because all the jets on it are blocked. The emulsion tube is all blocked. Everything is blocked. So had the bloke just spent a little bit of time, literally just fine tuning it and cleaning the whole carburetor. Had he watched a mixed mowers video on Tillerson carburetors, he could have kept this machine or sold it on for much more money because it would have been running. I'm hoping the engine's good and uh, we'll be golden. So there's a few holes here, there's about eight, eight or nine holes here. Give them a damn good clean. One there as well. And one there. Okay, that's what I have a little tiny bit of wire wall put on that um, just, to, just to clean that right up. Okay, because um, it, it is right dirty. It's a dirty birdie. But uh, that's going to be cleaned up fully yet. I'm not happy with it yet. I might, I might even hit that on my old brass wood, actually. I might, in fact, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I've just hit that with the old, with the old wire, wire wheel, and it's brought up lovely now. So that, that's so much better. Got all that dirt and grime. And now look at that. Look, look at how that runs. Look. That's what you want. Something like that. So that's out of the way. I've got this one here as well, which has to be... Um, there's a, a hole that goes all the way through here, uh, through this top part, and it come out down the bottom, which is blocked. There's a little tiny, it should come out down here. There's a little tiny, tiny hole in there, and that's not running either. So get your, get your gas tip cleaner files, the smallest one you want, should fit in there. And it goes all the way in, all the way down the bottom until you can see it coming out of the other end. Now just go a bit easier, you don't mind to snap in there. But it's got to be cleaned. Now if you can't get it in, then you need to go find something a bit thinner that's gone in right now. So it will go in. And you can see that in there. I don't know, but it's gone right away in. So you get a bit of a clean. And now, when we spray that, that should now come out the bottom. There you go. See that? It's blocked as well. See that's running out? And again, I'm going to hit that with the old wire wheel as well in a minute. So that's that one done. And then we've also got the main jet. Again, get your gas cleaning files on some about a medium one. And the hole in that is slightly blocked as well. I'm going to go in there, Mick. It's a bit tight on. Oh, no, it's gone in. Yeah, there you go. And just give it a rim as well. So these are the, these are the main components of this Tillerson carburetor. If you don't clean these out properly, your machine's not going to run right. I'm going to scrape around the top of the jet as well, where all the gunk sits. That's a bit that's exposed to the bottom of the bowl, you see. That's where all the gunk sits there. And that will now run as well. There you go. Lovely. Right, so we've done all, 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 the, all the main parts of this car. There is, there's only one other part just, which is here, which you've just got to do up and then undo it. it should be at one and a quarter turns. That screwdriver is way too big. Way too big. Let me get a smaller screwdriver. I need to have a sort out in my screwdriver box. I'm not very happy with it at the moment because uh, I'm trying to find the right screwdriver. This one here, you've got to do up and then um, see how many counts. So it's about it's about quarter past to quarter two. So that's half a turn. So it's actually just, it, it was just literally half a turn. That was it, just over half a turn, which is not right either. That should be about one and a quarter. But we'll always fine tune that later on when we get the machine running if it runs. WD 40 spray in there. 
make sure that runs. One in there. That comes out of there. Uh, one down in there. That comes out of there. See what I'm doing? I'm actually just running it through all the holes on this carburetor to make sure it all runs as it should do. And once we're happy that we've got all that all running, I'm then going to go over to my compressor and I'm going to compress it. Now, if you don't have a compressor, you can go down to Staples or any good office office shop, you know, where, where they sell office stationery, and you can buy a tin of compressed air. Now, I'm not going to go mad. I'm just blowing out anything potentially we've loosened up. Okay? If there's a hole, put it in it. Go careful here. Not too much air. Sausage party in there. In there. In there. In there. That's a carburetor and now compressed. We can now compress the uh, emulsion tube. Make sure we get anything out of there that shouldn't be in there. We're happy with that. Compress this one as well. Compress the main jet. That's it. That's that carby. Cleaned. Done. Finished. Finito. So I'm guessing, had the fella done that to the carb, um, he may have been in a slightly better situation. Now, he hasn't got an O-ring. I'm hoping I've got a spare O-ring here for one. I'm, I think I have, uh, but we shall see. Uh, if not, I have to order one, but um, I think I might have a spare TK carb one. Now, they are a little bit special okay um because they are quite a brittle sort of uh, o-ring and you have to be a bit careful with them ask my friend up in scotland he'll tell you all about it um he uh, he's he's been ringing that recently i've been ringing him out he's been having problems with his little that guy. um but you hope you've got to get the, the right o-ring for that and just be careful how you seat it because they're, they're not they're not brilliant okay so emulsion tube goes back in hit that in you can then put your main jet back in get rid of that that's the smallest bit you don't want to lose that one I'm going to nick that up. Nick him in. Nick him in. Well seated. So I hit that on the old wire wheel just to clean that up. Give me two seconds, I'll be back. Okay, that's been hit on the old wire wheel now. It's a bit, a bit cleaner in there. That goes down into there. And then get your six in one tool. And just, you know, I just have to start it off by hand first. Just to start it. And this tool was um, sent to me by my good friend Hank over in America. He's a lovely old boy. I think the world of him. Just gently screw that in. And it needs to go all the way. And well see. But, but don't hang on it. It's brass. If you brass on, if you hang on it, you're going to snap it. All right? So just don't hang on it. Just well seat it. That's now all done. We're happy with that. There's nothing else in this car that needs doing. Quick little inspection of the float. That looks to be okay. And the... Uh, the actual uh, needle itself needs to compress, which it does, and make sure you don't lose the end piece there as well, okay? Get your float, stick your little tiny needle on the float, do it over the pan, you don't want to be losing this. Do it over the pan, people. If it goes on the floor, you'll be looking for it. Stick that on, little tiny pin, it'll only go in one way, people, because they do that on these. Squeeze that in, and then just give that a little tiny tap with a hammer, because they are pressed in. Just very gently, not a lot. That'd be enough. A little dab do ya. Happy with that. We can now put this little tiny fuel mixture screw in. Uh, it was in, in about a quarter, wasn't it? Uh, that goes in here. There's no jet on there. I'm going to screw that in. The screwdriver I lost. I do. Screw it all the way home. Now I'm going to set that to about one and a quarter, okay, which is about 10 to. There's half, there's one, and there's a quarter. We'll go one and a quarter for now, okay. Now I've got to try and find an O-ring for this little tiny puppy. Give me two secs, let me see what I've got in my box of many things. Okay, I think I might have found one in my box of many things. I'm sure that says TK on there. T, TK, which means Tillerson TK. I'm hoping we've got one. Those are, as you can see, these are tiny, tiny little O-rings. They're tiny. But I do. Look at that. I did well there, Mick. So just make sure you well seat it. I didn't, I didn't think I had one of them. 
I've got one more left. So with these, you need to make sure that that's the, the way it goes on the engine facing away from you. So this faces towards you. And then what you want to do is put your little tiny um, bowl on, like so. Now you need to make sure that there's quite a bit of slack there. So what I recommend you do is you find your, your bowl nut, okay? And you just loosely just, just fit that on there like so. And then there's, there's quite a lot of slack there. You see that slack? You need to make sure you have it exactly perpendicular. That's Latin, that is. I can speak Latin. I can speak French. Le baguette. See? So that's not quite where I want it to be. These have a little, these have a tendency just, just to swell a bit. Okay. Here comes my Mrs. P by the sounds of it. There she is. Have you had a nice sleep, Mrs. P? You've been cooking a roast, have you? And what do we have for dinner tonight? Roast chicken. Roast chicken? Mm -hmm. Very nice indeed. You grab Mrs. P, stop grabbing hold of me. Just going to do that up. Now don't hang on that. I, what I'm going to do is just do it up a little tiny thread first. Just just, just bed that gasket down, okay? Don't hang on it. Um, we can always come back and tighten it later on. And then put your little tiny fuel mixer screw in there. And what I didn't do, actually, Mickle Mouse, I didn't actually put anything in there as much as that was running. So a bit of spray in there, I'm going to fill that chamber up. <clears throat> Hopefully that should run out of there. Yeah, it goes. Didn't check that, did I? Right. So put that little screw in. That goes all the way in. Just got to well seat that one. Mrs. P has just stood behind me here. Okay. All right, darling. Okay. And what do we have with our roast tonight? Um... What are we having? Roast potatoes. Roast potatoes. Roast potatoes. Um, broccoli. Broccoli. Carrots. Carrots. Peas. peas Yorkshire puddings. Yorkshire puddings. And a sausage. And a sausage. A sausage with chicken. Oh, we love a sausage party. Um, anyone come out for a sausage party? Mm, no, that's mine, sweetheart. You can't have that. That's actually mine. She's coming to roll herself a little sneaky cigarette because she's left. I left. She hasn't got no tobacco indoors, so that's what she's come down for. There she's there. See, there's Mrs. P's bum. See, there she is. Mm. There she is. Off she goes. Look. Just open the door, sweetheart. You want to go around it or oh, close the door. There she goes. My Mrs. P. Right. So, carburetor now done. Sausage putty. Um, new O-ring. All cleaned up. All good to go. That's a bit bent. I don't like that. We're going to straighten that out a bit later on. But that is the carbine in, in its entirety finished. I know it took a little while. But do you know what? With these little carbies, you've got to... You've got to be really thorough. If you're not thorough, you're going to get bad results. So hopefully we get a good result because I've been quite thorough with that. So tools you're going to need are little tiny um, screwdrivers for doing your, your, your glasses for punching the pin out. You need some of them. Go and grab your granny and nick her crochet tool and grind it right down to next to nothing but taper it. You're going to need one of them. You're going to need your, your six in one tool. You've got eight mil on the end. You're going to need one of them and your gas cleaning tips. If you've got those, right, then that, that carburetor, that'll probably cost you about, I don't know, 10, 15 quid for all them bits, right? They're only about four quid, okay? Um, if you've got all them tools, then you can then clean your Tillerson Carby. Let's get it fitted, and then we'll go from there. Right, so let me grab that Tillerson carburetor. It's around the back here, the old camera, there it is, right. So, we've now got, uh, the tilly back on together, all in. So I'm going to hook up the old, uh, the throttle, throttle arm first, right, right on the top, just so it sits there where it needs to be. A bit dicky to get on. There you go, that's gone on. Why right, is that on? That's on. Just hold that in place just like that. Okay, that, just, just let it hang there. I can then get my fuel hose, which is still weeping, a little bit. I'm going to hook that up. Now that fuel hose, to be fair, it's a little bit on the big side of things. I don't, I don't like that. That fuel hose is not the right size fuel hose. I've got some fuel hose here. Somebody bought me about half a ton of it off my old Amazonian wish list, which I'm going to use. So, I'm just going to compare the size I have got here. Mm, what have we got, Mickle Mouse? I've got loads here. I'd much rather put on a decent fuel hose than, uh, I think this is the stuff that actually my mate off of eBay, I can't remember, I think his name's Wobbly Wobbly, can't remember his name now. Do you know, on YouTube I meet so many people, I meet so many different people, 
I'm absolutely shocking with names. Um, and they send me bits and pieces, and we have a laugh and a joke. And you know, when I meet, I'm like, oh, I don't remember your name. Um, we should wear, all wear t name tags, it'd be easier. So he sent me, I think, a long time ago, a load of fuel line, of which, um, ah, it fits better, of which I'm going to use uh, on here just to make a bit of a tighter fit. Now, I was talking to my mate up in Scotland, again, can't remember his name. Oh, absolutely shocking with names. I'm trying to find my Nipex pliers at the same time as talk to you lot, and I can't find them. Because I had them out today. Um, oh, there we are. And I've been doing lots of different jobs around the house and what have you. But my mate off eBay, he sent me a load of fuel line for nothing. Now, I was talking to my mate up in Scotland, he got a problem with his. And he's put, he's put inline fuel filters on his and all sorts of stuff, right? To be fair, right, I don't think you need inline filters on these because the carbies are so forgiving. But I would say that the, the most direct route, the most direct route you have from the fuel tank to the, uh, to the carby is the best route, okay? Because we, we are gravity fed. So you don't necessarily need to have inline filters and all that sort of stuff. But you do need to have quite a good direct line so that the fuel is draining directly uh, from the fuel tank to the carby. Now I'm going to remove this here and put these fuel clamps on. One on there. And one on there. Because you want to have fuel clamps on here. Can we get on there? Right, there you go. Right, so, so now I can now hook up my, my fuel line. Oh, that's on there. Nice and nice tight fit. We like that. I'm going to put my, my fuel clamp on over top of that. I want to take that back off again. Just run that up. I want it to be a really, really good tight fit. That way you're eliminating your, your, your fuel leaks you might get. Get on there, oh, that's gone on lovely. I'm going to hook up my throttle again, that come off. On goes that, and I've got a fuel clamp down here to put on, which would be going onto my carb itself. It's a bit of manipulation, that goes on there, lovely, that's it. Yeah. That's, a, that's a correct fuel line for this. Oh, there you go, well, that's all on. Right, so now, we're in the right place. I can now get my air box, let me get rid of this fuel line. I've got given, boom. I can now get my air box. That has got a gasket on the back of this air box, you do need one as well. Don't go thinking you don't, because you do. And as you're sucking in too much air, we can now put our stub bolts in. Hopefully you, hopefully you guys are getting all of this. That all goes into there. Come on, baby, line up. Line it into there, line it into there. And now, just sit back there for a minute. Let me go and grab that Allen key, which is in that tray. <clears throat> and then we can then do up the bolts. And I've got an air filter for this somewhere. It will need an air filter. Now, if I nick them up, I'm going to pour a little bit of petrol in here. So I want to see if we've got any fuel leaks. And we are a little bit renowned for fuel leaks. That's why people put inline, inline taps on them and stuff like that. But as long as, you, as long as you're careful with it, then you shouldn't get a great deal. But it's nothing you can't overcome. It's generally the bowl O-ring is the reason for fuel leaks, okay? So we've got that all on. Let me grab... Uh, Sure, I've got an air filter for one of these. Sure, I have. Oh, sure, I got one. Uh, Briggs and Stratton parts. <sighs> what did I do with it? What did I do with the air filter? What did I do with the air filter? What did I do with the air filter? There it blinking is. Got one. I knew I had one. The brand spanking new air filter goes in. Look at that, brand spanking new air filter. That no expense bed that goes in there like that because air filter is important too, you know. I was it be sucking in too much air, all right? That's all I'll take it off a choke, right? So let me take it outside, we're good to go. Spark plug in place, uh, carpet has been cleaned. I've got a new fuel hose as well because it was a bit, was a bit old. The other one, 
Uh, fuel cap, the new fuel cap's been put on as well. I've done a fuel cap as well because that was a bit bit dicky. Um, I've got to check the oil as well. I'll do that now whilst, whilst you're here. Let's see what's doing for oil. Yeah, loads of oil, plenty of oil. I've not done it too bad either. So it's been well looked after this machine. So, you know, these machines generally are looked after. They're not generally just left. People who own these machines tend to look after them because they're not cheap. They're not cheap when you buy them. So, right, let me take it outside, meet you out there, and then we'll go for a little fire up and see what happens. How we now save this little lawnmower in, this, in the time it takes to clean the carburetor for about 20, 30 minutes? And did the bloke sell it on as spares of repair when well, he could have just watched my video and repaired it himself? Right, let's get it set up. Somewhere where you can see. Now the sun is a little bit working against me today. There you go. Okay, so let's put some fuel in. Let's see what we don't get. I want this machine to run, start, idle, drive, cylinder work, everything do what it should do. And I'm hoping for no fuel leak, so just a little bit of fuel to begin with. Just enough just to wet the whistle. And I'm checking for fuel leaks. Now it's quite common to get a fuel leak on these, as I say, but with a little bit of patience, you can stop them from leaking. A quick little hand test underneath, see so what it feels like if it's wet. No, we're holding fuel. So I might have to tune it yet, but we shall see. How have we now fixed it? Bearing in mind, it was sold to me as a spares or repair machine. So a little bit of rabbit, a bit of choke, and a bit of fingers crossed. First pull. Cylinder. Oh yeah. Drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have got a little tiny bit of hunting there. A little tiny bit of hunting, but I can rectify that just by uh, tuning that carburetor. It may want to be running a little bit leaner than what it was. So let me grab my little screwdriver. I'm going to put it onto full revs and then just going to try and even out that, that hunting just by adjusting that little tiny screw I showed you earlier on. down as much as I would like, I'm just going to set the idle. And stops and even now no fuel leaks one atco bow moral saved spares or repair back up and running in the mixed mode shack so there you have it one um atco bow moral spares or repair not anymore um, with a quick little carburetor clean as i said i do have a designated video for um roast carburetors if you just punch in tilliston carburetor clean mixed mowers on YouTube, then it'll come up and you can then sit and watch a designated video, which is about half hour long. 
on how to clean what tools you're required to actually clean that carburetor fully and as i say if you are very very particular in cleaning those carburetors um, those machines run absolutely flawlessly um, they are with it alongside the decumpsy engine the tillerson carburetor is the carburetor to go for the delorto auto carburetors mm -mm -mm, i'm not a fan and um, I've got another one coming in, a Morrison, which actually has a Suffolk Punch style carburetor, which I'm gonna just, just gonna change over just for a Tilly because the Tillys are just a much better carburetor. So if you see them on eBay, chew them up because they're getting a bit sparse now. I've got about six and no, none are for sale. So um, that's that um, Atco Barrymore 20SK, uh, 20S, sorry, not SK, uh, all up now up and running and doing exactly what it should do. The drive is very, very strong. The cylinder cuts lovely by the looks of it. It hasn't long been ground. And uh, it should now be up for sale after I give it a bit of a mixed mode cleanup, bit of a tie up, bit of a spray up where it needs it just to make it a bit more presentable. And then uh, that mower will be on the green before long, cutting grass like it should do, laying down those lovely crisp British stripes that we all are fond of. If you like this sort of video of Mixed Mars and Merman, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told next time I upload another video. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon, but until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.